Boom, let's do it. Boom, let's do it. What's up? Let's fix this. Let's pull it up here. Uh -huh. What's up, sons? It's Blind Red with Son of a Tech once again, and today I have another how to video. Today we're going to be looking at how to mine Neoxa on both Windows 10 as well as Hive OS. And this will be utilizing G Miner due to some issues that NB Miner is having with their GitHub. NB Miner is another good option that will work with both AMD and Nvidia, as well as you could utilize T Rex for Nvidia or you could use Team Red Miner separate for AMD, but they won't work with both cards. So for the guide, we're gonna use one that supports both styles of GPUs. We're gonna go over how to set it up, what it's about, and all that right after a word from today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is BT Miners. Purchasing mining equipment online can be dangerous. With all of the fake storefronts and scams, it can be hard to find a reliable source. That's why when BT Miners reached out for a channel sponsorship, I started by verifying that ordering and delivery went smoothly with a purchase of my own. If you are looking to purchase ASICs hardware from Bitcoin to Dogecoin miners, they are available for purchase on bt-miners.com. BT Miners is a trusted source by both asicminervalue.com and CryptoMiner.com. Follow the affiliate link in the description and use promo code FREESHIPPING2021 for free shipping on your order. Welcome back everybody. So first things first, let's go ahead and get a little bit of an idea of what Neoxa is. It's a proof of work, proof of game coin that is forked from Ravencoin. So yes, the algorithm here is gonna be Kapow, which, you know, if you're in a hot geographical location like I am in Texas, you may want to avoid mining, and I completely understand that. There's also some other things that we're going to talk about at the end of the video as far as liquidation goes and price discovery, which is going to be a little bit difficult for this coin. But if you want to mine it, we're going to show you guys how to do that. If you want to get into the proof of game section of this, we'll cover it in a later video, but there have been plenty of other crypto YouTubers that have covered it. What I noticed was there wasn't really a guide on how to do it with HiveOS, and there's some nuance there that I think this video may clear up for you. So, like I said, it is a proof of work, proof of game coin. And the thing about that is, is that the big news is that you have essentially this game server here under their game servers tab, where you can play Rust and earn the coin while you game. And this is super cool. It's very innovative as far as right now, as it's actually out and you can actually do it, unlike a lot of the other game integrated stuff. And the great thing about this too, is you're not earning cryptocurrency in some hack together game that nobody plays. This is Rust. Everybody's familiar with Rust. Other game servers will be coming along like Minecraft, etc. And we'll talk a little bit about why that may be important here in just a tad. So. Now that we have that figured out, if we go back to the home tab, we can look at all their information. Their total supply is going to be 21 trillion, it looks like. You're going to have, or 21 billion, excuse me. You're going to have a block time of 60 seconds. 85% of the rewards go to proof of work and 10% of the rewards to proof of game. It does appear there's a 5% developer fee or foundation fee or something along those lines. So keep that in mind while you're taking a look at this. And the exchanges that it's available on is Trade Ogre and Textbit. Now, when I looked at Trade Ogre and Textbit, a majority of the volume is on Textbit.io. However, Textbit is going to be a fully KYC exchange. So I'd prefer Trade Ogre start to get more volume. That's where I'll point you guys to. However, Trade Ogre is only at about $400 for the total volume. And the problem with the total volume on this, right, which is about $4,500 total, is that you run into this weird issue of the fact that right now the coin's primary use case is to earn it and then sell it. And there's not really an incentive to purchase the coin because there's no in-game incentive to have more of the coin. That could change down the line when they add new game servers and new features to things like rust maybe being able to purchase in-game items etc would be something that would drive the price of the coin up right now though that's kind of where it sits at so what about mining it you say well that's actually not too shabby 
and we're going to get into it. First of all, you're going to need to get a wallet. You can get that from their downloads tab over here and you can get the Windows GUI wallet, which will bring you to their GitHub. Make sure it's the official GitHub and you're looking for the Windows QT wallet and then you're just going to click it to download it. You may have to approve it depending on your browser, etc. And that will vary from browser to browser. Just be aware that that could be a problem. We're going to go ahead and open the folder though. And right here, as you can see, it is ready to basically be installed. So we're going to right click it and say cut. And the reason we're doing this, we want to basically keep our Windows AV or antivirus intact. So now I'm going to go to desktop and I'm going to create a new folder. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to say new, and I'm going to say folder, and I'm going to name this Neox. And then we're going to press enter. At this point, we're going to go ahead and get into our antivirus, virus and threat protection. We're going to go down and we're going to say manage settings. We're going to scroll down here and we're going to add or remove exclusions. We're going to say yes to the UAC pop-up and we're going to say add new exclusion. We're going to select folder. We're going to go to our desktop and we're going to find the new folder that we just created. Select it and say select folder. Now we have an exclusion. At this point we can go back to file explorer. We're going to open the folder and then we're going to right click again and remember we copied that so we're just going to go ahead and paste the file into here you won't want it to extract it to here because that can still activate any antivirus once again do not do this on a pc with personal or financial information on it sensitive information you're going to right click and say extract all and then click extract at this point you will have your neoxa QuickTime Wallet, you can double click it. Windows will say it protected. You're gonna say more info and then run anyways. And at this point, the application will run. This will be the core wallet. You will get a pop-up for your firewall to allow access to public networks. That's also why I suggest keeping all of your mining and crypto stuff on a separate VLAN if you are running on the same home network or a completely separate network, if at all possible. And it'll start syncing. Don't worry though, while it's syncing, you can still generate a wallet address by clicking hide and then clicking the receive button. The label we're gonna create here is gonna be mining. You can see that we already created it. So at this point, once it's created, we can highlight it and click show. And this will be our wallet address. So we can copy the address out from here. Now, if you want to back up your wallet, you can do that as well. And I highly recommend doing that by clicking the wallet button or the wallet menu option and then clicking backup wallet. And then you can just basically save it to a USB drive that is BitLockered, as you can see, we popped open the BitLocker up here. One of the things I suggest when BitLocker or when doing this is creating a little BitLockered USB drive. You can check out my previous guide on how to mine uh, Ergo and Neta to see this process. So now we have that saved and we can go ahead and bump down to it because it's unlocked now. And we're just going to say Neox Backup and then save the data file. Now, if you ever lost it and you need to recover it, all you really have to do is install the wallet and then basically come in and drop your data file, which will be saved right here, into the install folder. If you'd like a full guide on that, let me know and we will get into it, but just make sure it's backed up for now. We have recoveries for wallet guides and this is very similar to Ravencoin. So that's all you have to know right now. Now your other option for a wallet, of course, is going to be Trade Ogre. And if you want to create a Trade Ogre account, it's pretty simple. You just come up here to the account and come into the login and then click the register here button and then type in your email address and then a password, agree to the terms and select register. You'll have a little captcha oh, and we're already registered there apparently for that one. So I would need to register with a different email and agree to the terms and register. Once again, we'll have to type this all in. And then once logged in, you'll need to basically verify your account. It does suggest that you enable two-factor authentication. I highly recommend doing that. But if you're just trying to figure out how to deposit the coin, you're going to go into your balances and search for Neoxa. And then right here, you can go ahead and say deposit, and then you'll get your Neoxa wallet address and you can copy it out of there. So there's your two wallet options for this, for this in particular. 
Obviously, for long-term holds, utilize the core wallet, control your own keys. If you're looking at just selling right away, you can use the exchange. In theory, you'll need both at the end of the day, so there you go, one to liquidate. So now let's get into the mining. Today we're going to be using G Miner. Like I said, I'd suggest utilizing NB Miner, but G Miner has their GitHub still up and available. So we're going to go ahead and use G Miner today, and we're going to be utilizing the Windows version. So let's go ahead and get that downloaded. Once it's downloaded, we'll open the folder here. We're going to go ahead and right click and say cut. Then we're going to go to our desktop. We're going to find that folder that we added exceptions to, and we are going to paste it into this folder. At this point, we're going to right click and say extract all, and then click the extract button. Now, at this point, we're ready to go ahead and modify the Ravencoin batch file because that will be set up the closest to, of course, a fork from Ravencoin, which is Neoxa. So we're going to right click it. We're just going to say copy, and then I'm going to go ahead and paste it. Now, I'm going to rename it as well. So I'm going to right click, and I'm going to say rename. And we're just going to come in here, and we're going to say mine, and then we're going to say Neoxa right there. Boom, and done. So at this point, we're going to right click it and say edit, and then we will be able to edit this right here. I'll leave a copy of it down below. But the main things that you need to change is going to be the server, which we will get into now. We're going to be using, utilizing Zerg Pool. There are other pools that you can utilize. This will allow you to solo mine, which is pretty beneficial here because solo mining is pretty easy on this. The other thing is that uh, there is already more than 51% on another pool here. So I suggest avoiding that. So you, you can go to Zerg Pool and essentially get this entire setup right out of here. So. North America is the region that we set. You can select your respective region. We're going to scroll down and find Kapow, right? So we're just typing Kapow and boom. Our payout currency, though, is going to be different. It's going to be Neoxa. So we're going to say Neoxa. This is also going to allow us to select the specific coin. And then it's going to give us, we're going to put in our payout wallet address, which once again, we can use either one of these, right? So we can either copy it out of here or we can copy it out of the wallet. So we can come into here and uh, go to our receive button and select our mining wallet and select the copy address. So you can copy either one of those and then come into the Zerg pool, type it into the payout wallet, and then you can type in a name for your rig right here. And this is the generation of what you want. Here's kind of the interesting thing, right? Is that this is all a little different than the way it's formatted for G minor. So you kind of have to use a little bit of critical thinking here. So obviously this looks like the server address. So we're just going to go ahead and copy that out and we're going to replace the server address up here with it. Right. And so this is server and we're going to remove, making sure we remove any additional spaces and making sure the format is correct. So we're going to get rid of the TCP and we have the Kapow NA mine. We have the port in there. The user is going to be our wallet address that we just got from here. So we're going to go ahead and copy that out the control C we're going to paste that in place of this making sure we remove that space and then the last part is the important part which is going to be basically specifying that we want to mine that coin right so to do that what we want to do is do space dash dash pass because that is how G minor reads it and at that point we're going to go ahead and copy this part out the ID and all of this right here and we're just going to paste that after the pass, finishing off the test here, and we're just going to get rid of, we're going to do view, let's format word wrap. That'll make this a little bit easier. All right, there we go. So this will be our new batch file, making sure that you have the coin in there in the pass, uh, the MC, the payout address, and then the ID, and then you're going to go ahead and click file and save. At this point, we will go back to the folder with Neoxa in it and G minor, and we'll double click the mine Neoxa batch file. And we will begin mining Neoxa, and we put in the wallet address, obviously, for our primary one. So 
That is how you mine it on Windows, and you can check it down below for the batch file. What about HiveOS? And obviously HiveOS can be, once again, a little bit more complicated here because it's not one of those preset coins. So let's get into HiveOS and building the custom flight sheet for it. All right, so we're in my Hive OS now, and the first thing we're going to want to do is go into our wallets and create a new wallet. We're going to click Add Wallet, and for the coin, we're just going to type in Neoxa. And then for the address, we're going to go ahead and grab that from our... I have this already pulled up from our Trade Ogre, and we're going to name it Neoxa. And then we are going to go ahead and just say Create. So now we're ready to build our flight sheet. So for our flight sheet, we're going to go into our flight sheet. And we're going to select Neoxa for the coin. For the wallet, we'll select the Neoxa wallet. For the pool, we will configure in minor. And for the minor, we will select G minor. Now, once in G minor, we'll select, of course, set up minor config. For the algorithm, we will select Kapow. For the wallet, we will paste in the wallet address, or we can just hit the uh, percentage wallet sign. So that would actually pull it from the other wallet, which can be a little bit beneficial if you're trading out wallets and so on. So now we need to do the server. So we'll go back to Zerg pool, right? And we'll grab that server address that we generated earlier. We'll come back to our flight sheet and paste in the server address. Now for G minor, you can always hit the I. It'll kind of show you that it doesn't need the stratum. Some miners need the stratum, like NB miner would need that little stratum uh, precursor, but this one does not. So next we have the port. So obviously that tells us that we want to put the port in here. So we're going to get rid of that and we're going to place the port right there. And then for the password, this is where we put in the special stuff, right? So we come in here and we just select the everything after the P and we paste that in. Now on this particular setup, I do have it going to solo. So we could name the rig or we could just get rid of it. Another thing we could say is percentage worker name percentage, boom, like that. Then it'll pull the worker name uh, from there. So we can get rid of the SOAT test and ID would equal the worker name so that it'll pull the worker name from the actual rig. Awesome stuff, right? At that point you can click apply changes and go apply it to whichever rig you want. And as you can see here, we're mining uh, with a couple 3060s, a 3080 Ti, and a 3070 Ti. They're overheating a little bit. We'll probably throw them back on Ergo just to keep the heat down. But for the guide, I wanted to make sure that we got this all going. In fact, you can see that it's resetting right now due to the temperature. So there you go though. That's how you would mine it on Hive OS. So I hope you guys enjoyed this how-to and basically are familiar now with Neoxa a little bit on how to mine it on obviously Hive OS as well as Windows 10. Once again, the problem will be total volume and basically being able to liquidate due to the low liquidation or the low volume, excuse me, on both of the exchanges currently only totaling $4,500 in total, and that's gonna be a problem until there's a use case where people actually need the token to use it for something, which could be coming down the line as they add it to more game servers like Minecraft, etc. As far as the proof of game, of course, that's gonna be 10% of your reward. Go play in Ray or go play in Rust and have fun. Enjoy that. You can watch other people talk about that. I know like even Red Panda Mining's been playing it some stuff like that. I'm not a huge Rust fan, so maybe when they get a game that I'm interested in, I'll move over to that. Right now, I'm playing a lot of the Cycle Frontier over on twitch.tv slash blindrun, but this is a neat project. I wanted to show you guys how to mine it because it's a little bit more difficult. If you found it helpful, hit the like, comment, subscribe down below, and I will see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to hit the subscribe button for more or check out this playlist for more crypto content related topics.